Well, it seems to work. What is that saying? Never trust a neat home shop machinist? Hi everyone, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of the family, I mean shop. Uh, this is a 24 by 24 CNC router table. This particular machine was manufactured by Torcam. I said Torcam, not Tormach. Torcam, as best as I can research, uh, was a Canadian machine tool building slash distribution company that sold machines primarily to the educational market, high schools, colleges, universities. I posted a picture of this machine in the back of the, the Sienna just after I picked it up and Stefan commented, hey, is that an ISIL? And ISIL is a German manufacturer of machines similar to this and they make all the components and sell components to build machines like this, these aluminum extrusions and linear rails and such and I thought that was an interesting comment so I took some covers off when I got home and indeed the majority of the components are all ISIL components. What I suspect happened was that Torcam either purchased these machines as kits and assembled them in Canada to say that they were made in Canada or maybe they just bought all the components from ISIL but whatever the case the components also say uh, West Germany so that sort of gives you an idea of timeline as to how old this machine is. Now, the machine didn't come with any motion control system. That's probably a blessing because it would have been very antiquated. I've just outfitted Linux CNC involved mounting new stepper motors. Uh, it had much smaller stepper motors on all the axes. These are uh, square ones that you utilize round ones. I had these kicking around in the shop so I decided to put them on. These are NEMA 23 I believe they're 425 ounce inch steppers. And as you can tell, I've done this professionally, uh, just as Tony would suggest, none of that hobby grade stuff for, for this shop. There's a Linux CNC motion controller for this machine and it's sitting down here, conveniently placed on the floor. Underneath this wood bench that I built for this table is the the panel that controls it with the power supplies and the stepper drivers and that is a MESA 7i76 interface board and in the computer I have the 5i25 that's a classic Linux CNC interface kit for older computers just got that working now um, obviously all this stuff needs to get cleaned up uh, I have a enclosure coming to mount the panel in. I'm going to mount it on the side of the table and I can rewire this properly and finish this job up. But I was just testing out the motion. Everything seems to work. So why don't we rewind? You can see some of the work that went into getting it to this point and then we're going to move this forward and finish this project up.
So this is the, the Z axis here on this sort of on the gantry, mounted on the gantry. You can see here, uh, sort of off camera a little bit, but this, this thing utilizes all ball screws and that's one of the big reasons I purchased it. It has this unique design for linear rail that looks like to be a combination of circular shafting and an aluminum extrusion. That's an ISIL special, I believe. I don't know if they've patented that. I'm sure the patents probably run out, but they seem to be the only ones who produce it. I don't know how rigid this machine is going to be, but I think it'll be actually not too, too bad. The training machine, you can tell, is from this knob here that the, the instructor or student could quickly turn this and move move the axis up and down. Uh, it's uh, actually held on with a really interesting design. As you can see, I just pulled that off. Like I said, I loosened most of this stuff off. These are, um, this is another, um, and, I, and I've cut this stuff off. Uh, this was partially disassembled actually when I bought it, but it doesn't matter. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is partially why you can kind of tell this isn't a really high performance machine. They actually hid the steppers under this aluminum extrusion. When you start really upping the current to these stepper motors, they tend to get quite warm. So this could, could overheat if it was used a lot. Most times they just leave the, the stepper motor right in the air so it can cool. But anyway, they they had these all these really nice extrusions done out. Would have been a lot of money in tooling to build this thing. So this was interesting. I thought this was a pretty cool design. So this this cap actually slides on here, and the cap screw, and this screws on. I like this design the way this works. So there's a taper, and then when you tighten it down, this taper pinches the shaft. Huh? So I'm gonna have to reuse that for the new handles if I make handles for it. These are the stepper motors that. Uh, that were used and then you'll see here in a minute just to save you the sort of pain of watching me try to get this apart that's why I partially took it apart already so this is the the stepper motor that's currently used uh, a VEXA uh, made in Japan motor um, it's, it's fairly small I'm gonna put larger motors so I'll show you those in a minute and then they have this other extrusion here, which interestingly has a limit switch in it, which is a nice feature. And they, again, they had this custom made. And then here is this motor coupling that they used. I'm not a huge fan of these on CNC machines because this rubber obviously can compress and affect your accuracy, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I may replace those down the road. And then and you can see the axis sort of move there. Here's a close-up of sort of the ball screw. This is on the, the gantry itself. And this, this linear rail that they used, you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera there, but this, this portion here is aluminum. And then this portion here looks to be a hardened steel shaft. And then they have sort of linear bearings here. These are ISIL. This is how I found out that they were ISIL ones. You can see it better on this one here too. That's what the linear rails sort of ride on. And in these are ball bearings. So these don't recirculate, but they do ride on. The steel shaft is, within these blocks, is a ball bearing that rides on this steel shaft. So there doesn't appear to be much play. It's not like super rigid, because everything's made out of aluminum. I don't really intend on using this thing for milling out tool steel, mostly for engraving work. So here's the existing stepper motor that like we, you saw me quickly take off. It's, I'm gonna replace it with, and I bought these a while back off Kijiji, Canadian equivalent of Craigslist. But uh, so these are the ones that I'm gonna replace it. They are the same frame size. Uh, these are NEMA 23s. But as you can tell, this one's significantly larger. And you can tell it's actually a much different design. The holding torque on these is significantly higher than this one. I'm pretty sure with this motor, the magnet on this one here, ex the rotor extends most of this black area. This one here with the way this motor is designed is this area. Now, I think these motors, the old ones, are, are actually fairly well made. Um, I can't find any data on them. Uh, Vexta, I don't think, makes them anymore. Um, interestingly, it says 1.44 DC volts and 4 amps. DC voltage seems pretty small. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of these. There'll be a project that I can use these for for some sort of positioning system down the road. But 
Um, we're going to put these ones on. Um, it's nice. The shaft size is the exact same. Uh, the bolt pattern is exactly the same. So we're just going to basically reassemble it with these motors and then we're going to wire up these, these motors, the windings, and we're going to put those in parallel. Well, I thought those were going to fit. I guess we got to do something about this. Okay, well, I thought these stepper motors were exactly the same as the stepper motors that were on the router. Uh, it turns out that the mounting holes, as you just saw, uh, are smaller on these steppers than on the other ones. So I am going to drill these out. I'm just centering it up here in the mill. We'll open these up a bit. We can mount the stepper motor on there. There, that's good. So these should just go in here nicely. Should. Right? Every time I say something is simple, it never turns out to be simple. Taking off the, the x-axis motor, uh, I noticed the, the limit switch was actually broke, which is probably one of the reasons why this machine was gotten rid of. It's a really small switch. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can maybe see it. It's just a reed type switch. It's missing a, a hoop here so that it actually can trigger the, the switch itself. Uh, what I did was I went and ordered some some of these. I could just get these ones quickly. I don't know how, how good they're going to be, but I'm just going to replace the one. The other two are fine, actually, uh, but just this one. So we're going to replace that. So I'm going to solder the wires onto that limit switch, and this, this is a Christmas present that I haven't even opened up yet. Uh, now, depending on when I get this video posted, uh, it may be a little ways away from Christmas, but I got this for Christmas. It replaced uh, actually a Chinese um, soldering iron that broke. Uh, I don't know how good the hacko is. Usually, um, and welders are a lot more popular around around here, but I'm going to give this sucker a shot. It, it looks great, so let's 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 open it up. It's actually a pretty substantial stand. Kinda looks like a soldering iron and a smurf would use, but it's really quite nice. I didn't get the extra tips with it, I don't think. It should probably
probably look at getting those. This tips. Tips okay for what I'm gonna do now. It's a. Uh, it's a little big. the enclosure mounted on the side over there I routed some of the cables to there already uh, the x-axis here these are the, the cables for the motor that are kind of just hanging here I'm gonna get this chain plastic chain mounted and route the cables through it and it's sort of the proper way to do it interestingly it never came with that I think that's a bit odd maybe it didn't somebody threw it away but I have to get that mounted up and then we will continue to finish wiring up everything in the in the cabinet and then we're going to build a mount for the spindle uh, I purchased a Makita router spindle uh, high-speed spindle for mounting here so we're gonna do that and probably do that in the subsequent video <music>
everything mounted, the enclosure, pop this off the tripod, it is all covered up. And you just saw us boot up Linux CNC, all the axes work. So I'm just going to finish cleaning up these axes and some of the dirt that's in here um, from when I got it. I'm going to put the covers back on and then we're going to go and build a spindle mount for uh, the Makita router that I picked up. That mount will probably be on a separate video because it's a pretty big project. Well, it's not a huge project, but it's a decent sized project to get that done. So I'm just going to put this stuff all back. You can see the router that I have. Still got to clean up all the tools. But everything seems to work and we're, we're looking really good. I particularly like this wire track here. I could have maybe used something like that on the side, but I decided against it. I'm going to use, I just used some wire loom, but it, it looks fairly neat and I think it will travel just fine on the Y axis there. I think that's it for now. I'm going to go through uh, Linux CNC uh, on a subsequent video at some point and show you how I set it up, how straightforward it actually is. But other than that, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Well, I did say that was it, but let's see this thing move on rapid.